we're going to look at a few cartographically based processes, which we can combine to create a print ready layout, similar to the one I have here. Uh, we're going to focus on three main aspects in the chart symbology, uh, the masking of the labeling, as well as how we got those soft boundaries for our features, as well as the halo or uh, purplish colors you may see around our feature. So I'm just going to put this in and let's start with our charts. So the data I have working with right now is just a population data. Um, and we're just having it symbolized by graduated color here. Now introduced in ArcGIS Pro 2.5, we can now create chart symbology. And chart symbology is just beneficial to us in that we can show uh, quantitative uh, data in a different light or a different uh, view. So what we're going to do is similar to when we're doing graduated colors or graduated symbols, we're going to open the symbology pane. We're going to go on down to charts, and then you're going to select your relevant fields. Now, let's say, for instance, I wanted to show uh, demographic data for higher tier age categories for vaccine rollout for COVID-19. I'm going to select the relevant fields. Uh, let's start with 60 to 64 years. And then we'll go in five year age gaps. So we'll go 65 to 69 and then 70 to 74. Now I'll do this for the two more, but I won't keep you guys on that. We'll just pick a, rel a suitable color, I should say. And then our final output would look something like this here. Now one key thing to note is the charts will change based off the extent that you're looking at. And you may not have noticed from the extent that I was looking at previously, or the scale I was looking at previously, but it's actually adding a leader line to add to work with that correction to the location of the chart. Now, let's say, for instance, we're working with Ontario. Now, my layout is going to make use of several transparency with features, but I don't want my transparency to be affected by my features. So if say for instance here, we're looking at the Ontario label. We don't want our subdivisions from our health units or our highway feature in this case to intersect with our label. We're gonna make use of the feature outline mask tool to remove those features from within our label. Now the first step to this, and I've gone ahead and completed this process already, is to convert your label to an annotation. From here, once you have it as an annotation, you're going to open your geoprocessing tools and you're going to open the feature outline mask. You're going to input your layer, which would be your annotation. It's going to work on pre filling all the regular boxes. Now, the only thing to, that I specified differently in this case was the mask kind. In this case, I selected box mask as my mask kind, which will create a box around the annotation rather than around each particular letter. Now I've ran this already and I'll show you what the output would look like. So the output would look like this blue box here created around the feature. Now you can turn this layer off. You don't have to keep it on, but you do need to keep it in your map from here. You're going to select your relevant layer that you'd like to mask. Give me one second there. I'm just going to move this down a bit. All right. So I'm just working with it here because my appearance button was blocked, but I'll go back to it in larger afterwards. So let's say, for instance, we had our health unit layer and we wanted to mask that out from our annotation. I'm just going to select the layer. Click Appearance. Within the masking drop down, I'm going to select the feature that I want to mask out, that being the box mask. And then once you click anywhere outside of that, it'll apply. I'll do the same thing for our highways as well. So we're going Highways, Masking drop down, select the box mask, anywhere outside, and hit Apply. I'll make it larger for you guys again. That way we can look at this from the full extent. So as you see here, this is what it would look like from the full extent. We've removed all that conflict we were working with previously. Okay, so let's move on to our final section. 
to me, this is what really brought our layout together completely was working with the soft boundaries or a layered boundary, you could say, as well as the background for the provinces, as well as the states. Let's start with the background. What I'm going to do is turn off this halo layer. We'll get to that later. We're actually going to open the polygon symbol formatter and work on each individual layer of the symbol. So let's start with the boundary itself. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this uh, value for the width of the boundary to a 0 0.05. It's going to be the outermost extent. And I'm actually going to make the color properties. We're going to work with a grayscale for this. And I want my gray to be a 45, sorry, with a 60% transparency. Now we're not going to add any buffers to this. We're actually going to manually create buffers. So what we're going to do is duplicate this layer. If we go to the uh, structure, and there's a duplicate layer option. So we'll do this two more times. And then let's go back to our uh, layers. For a second layer, we're going to make this a little bit wider. And we're going to use a three-point width. And we're also going to change the color properties, similar to the we did previously. We're going to make this a 96 gray with a 90% transparency. And I'll hit apply just so we can get a feel of what it's going to look like in the end before I do the final one. Similar process, seven point. We're going to change the grayscale again. We're going to use the same degree of gray, but we're going to increase the transparency. So this is our boundaries. This is the boundaries we'll use for all features within the map. We're going to change up the background as well. So we're going to keep it with a solid fill. The only thing we're going to change here is the grayscale. And we're going to make it a 225. And we're going to change the degree of the transparency. And apply. And this is what our final output for our background for our main area, as well as our surrounding areas. Now let's work on the big one, the study area, our focus area. We'll turn this on and let's get working on this. Now, since we have the soft boundaries from the previous layer, which is on top or behind this already, we can go ahead and delete the boundary from this layer. We're actually going to make use of gradient fill in this case. And we're going to make use of two purple, in this case, ultramarine colors. We're going to select ultramarine for both cases. And the adjustment that we're going to make is to the transparency. So if I go into color properties, we'll have our ultramarine set. It has that hex number. But we want to change the transparency. So we want it to be slightly darker on the outside. So we'll set that to 90%. And then on the inside, we're going to use 100%. Now, obviously, you guys can pick whatever numbers work best for you, for your layout. I found that these ones are the ones that work best for me when I was working with my layout. Now the interval is going to change the number of levels that that color changes from the one transparency to another. And then the size is basically how far you want that uh, buffered area to move inwards. And then I'm just going to hit apply. And this is kind of how we got that halo effect around our study area. And especially since we're working with, I'm just going to apply that, especially since we're working with a gray primarily for our backgrounds and surrounding areas, the smallest bit of color will amplify our study area and make it pop out a lot more to anyone viewing the layout. These cartographic processes can be combined or used individually. Uh, you can make use of any one of these throughout when you're making your layouts or maps. And hopefully you guys can have fun with these toys.